is the de-aerator. The de-aerator actually has two functions. To add heat to the condensate and feed water to improve cycle efficiency and to expel oxygen and other dissolved gases from the boiler feed water. The presence of dissolved oxygen in feed water is a prime cause of corrosion in boiler tubes. Removal of as much dissolved oxygen as possible is essential. And normally we try to limit the amount of dissolved oxygen in feed water to as low as two or three parts per billion. A typical de-aerator looks like this. In actual fact, the de-aeration takes place in the upper vessel, while the large vessel below is merely a storage tank providing suction to the feed water pump. In most plants, the capacity of this storage tank is sufficient to keep the feed water pump going for about 10 minutes, even without receiving condensate from a condensate system. So this should be sufficient for an emergency shutdown. The removal of dissolved oxygen is achieved by intimate mixing of steam and water. The condensate enters at this point and passes over a number of trays which cause the liquid to break up into fine drops. This increases the surface area available and so greatly improves the mixing with steam. The steam condenses and, in doing so, raises the temperature of the mixture to saturation. This action liberates the oxygen which is present and this is exhausted from the vents at the top of the de-aerator. The de-aerated water droplets then fall into the storage tank below. During startup on the unit, before extraction steam is available from the turbine, partial de-aeration is achieved by supplying live steam to the de-aerator. This comes from the auxiliary steam system and is automatically controlled. That is, when the extraction steam pressure falls below an established minimum, the live steam supply opens up. The de-aerator vents may be piped to the condenser but frequently they are released to atmosphere through a vent condenser. In this arrangement, most steam blowing to atmosphere through the vent is condensed as it passes over the condensing tubes, which transfer heat from the steam to the incoming condensate. So by 